Hi everyone, this is Sonia and welcome to my channel Sonia Psychology Classes. In last class, we studied about uh, what is experiment, uh, what are independent, dependent and extraneous variables. We did a lot of examples uh, and at the end we also did some practice questions. Now in this class, we'll be talking of, uh, about types of experiments. Uh, obviously, we'll be using a lot of examples to understand the concept and by the end of the class, we'll also do some practice questions. So keep watching the video and let's get started. So what is experiment? An experiment is a study or a research which is carried out in a very strategic manner. There are different variables and our purpose is to see the effect of one variable on the other. How these, you know, what is the cause and what is the effect? Usually the cause is the independent variable and the effect is the dependent variable. Experimenters usually collect data from either two experimental conditions or uh, from either one experimental condition and one control condition and see what uh, and compare the data to study the cause and effect. Cause and effect can only be inferred if all the other variables in the experiment that is impacting the dependent variable are well controlled. Experiments usually have a standardized procedure, means standardized instructions, standardized pr procedures for all the participants across the conditions unless and until any condition that we need to study. So what is a lab experiment? Lab experiment is an experiment which is conducted in an artificial setting. So this is these are the keywords that you need to remember when we say lab experiment. So it is an artificial setting. What does that mean? That means when the experimenter wants to do a research, they make a setting that is artificial in nature. It is not natural to any participant. I, for example, I'll just give an example here. Uh, maybe I want to see that how kids behave in a certain way uh, so I call uh, all the kids, let's say 20 kids at my home probably and in my home I have set up a room which is full of toys, uh, a few swings are there or maybe you know sand pit and all these things are there. So I want to do a research where I see that you know how kids share with each other, what age kids um, speak to each other, which gender is more aggressive, what is their behavior like. So all these are a kind of observations as a researcher I want to make when I'm seeing these kids. So what do I do when I call these participants, these children to my house and I take them to this room where you know I have settled, set up everything this is an artificial setting this is not natural to them this is something that i have artificially made up so this is called a lab experiment now here in lab experiment one of the most important features is that the extraneous variables are very well controlled by the experimenter i can take care of the noise pollution i can take care of the lighting i can take care of which uh, so who, who all participants can be you know, on part of my study um, i can take care of the lab experiment of toys I want to keep in my out in or, or real kind of world swings setting. or how the so there is setup nothing should look like. about it. So it is very most real, of the things uh, it is very controlled by the researcher. As in, you know, it can so this be is what ground, experiment park, is. mall, theater or whatsoever the observation can, the experiment can be taken place. So for example, I'll just take the same example that I took for the lab experiment, calling children and seeing them, their the behavior. So instead of calling these kids to my house and seeing, uh, you know, noting down all their behaviors, I plan to go to some random park and see all these behaviors there so this would be uh, the kids playing in their own natural environment in their real world setting so this will be called as field experiment now the most important feature of field experiment is usually it is very difficult for a researcher to control the extraneous variables for example, uh, I'm not the one who is controlling what all toys they'll be bringing or what kind of swings are there or what kind of weather is there. Maybe that day it starts raining and hardly any kid comes or maybe that day, you know, the, some kid's best friend hasn't come. So they're sitting very quietly. Otherwise, they're very hyperactive or that day maybe, you know, uh, more boys are there and less girls are there so there is not equality of the gender uh, these are a few things uh, you know that might affect their behavior and these extraneous variables as we know always have an effect on the db and the outcome is not usually uh, because of the iv but by the impact the that last is, is the natural experiment. experiment so here now, the natural experiment, experiment is set up in a natural setting experiment but it is where uh, the, the uh, experiment the is experiment. held out in a very natural environment real world setting um, so this is the major common thing between 
between the natural experiment and the field experiment the biggest different between uh, difference between field experiment and natural experiment is that in field experiment i as a researcher can control the iv manipulate the iv and choose the iv but in natural experiment i cannot manipulate the iv i cannot vary the iv i can only choose the iv i'll give an example in field experiment and lab experiment i have given you an example of park now when i said be it an artificial setting or a natural setting so in both field and lab i was the one who was you know choosing um, or manipulating the independent variable which all participants are going to come and you know which park i need to go to to do the experiment and all that but in natural experiment what is happening i am i can only choose the iv i cannot manipulate it for example uh, i want to see uh, how people are um, uh, behaving or you know how their lifestyle has changed after the earthquake has happened to them in their place so for example there is a country where earthquake has happened and the life of people have changed so now i want to study their you know this change in behavior now obviously here i cannot manipulate the iv iv is the earthquake how their lifestyle is now is the dv here here i cannot manipulate i cannot bring the earthquake anywhere obviously i can only choose the place where this iv has happened already another example is if i want to compare two conditions uh, one is the to see how children grow up when they have both the parents and how children grow up when they are orphans when they don't have the parents so i compare need to compare these two groups now this is also a natural experiment uh, because here i can only choose those two uh, the, those children who have parents or who don't have parents obviously i cannot make a child go parentless that is not in my hands obviously so i can only choose those participants who are into these conditions so this is called natural experiment in a way it is common to the field experiment it is in real world setting but at the same time i cannot uh, manipulate or vary the iv i can only choose the iv that makes it a natural experiment So now we are clear with what is lab experiment, field experiment, natural experiment. So the next is let's do uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of all the three, and we'll also do the comparison. So this is a very nice table that I have made it for you all. Um, it will be very helpful. You can either take a screenshot or you can just you know note it down. So the very first strength of lab experiment is that all the extraneous variables are very well controlled in lab experiment because it is an artificial setting and if I am a researcher I can very well control all the variables there. The second uh, strength of experiment uh, lab experiment is that the validity is really high because the extraneous variables are well controlled here. Uh, I can see the cause and effect relationship. So I know whatever the DV is coming, it is because of the IV and not because of the extraneous variable here. So IV and DV, the cause and the effect is very well inferred. Hence, the validity of the experiment is really high. The third uh, strength of lab experiment, it is high on reliability. What do you mean by high on reliability? It is highly standardized. Now I can make sure since it's an artificial setting. So I as a researcher can make sure that all the procedures, all the um, aspects of the experiment is equal. Same instruction, same procedure, same resources. Everything is same for all the participants. So it is very highly standardized throughout. Since it is highly standardized, the reliability also increases. Reliability means every time i can replicate the experiment so if it is a lab experiment if i have been able to set up it once i can do that again and again maybe i have done this experiment today and after six months i feel i want to do this experiment again i can again you know make the same setup because it's an artificial one so i make the same setup and i can replicate the study do it again or after five years if i feel i again want to do this study maybe on a bigger sample size I can replicate so this is because it is highly standardized it is also I can also replicate it as many times I want so the reliability is also high in lab experiment 
Fourth, uh, ex uh, fourth strength of lab experiment is it is usually high on ethics. Why? Because when I'm calling the participants to be in my study, uh, they obviously know that they're going for the study. I'll be taking an informed consent from them. That is the permission taking from them that they're going to be in the study. I'll be giving them the instructions what they are going to step into. Um, so there are a few ethics that we'll be discussing in the next class. So basically, since it's a lab experiment where the participants are being called, it is usually high on ethics. The weakness of lab experiment is that it is usually high on demand characteristics. What are demand characteristics? I uh, taught you in the previous class. Demand characteristics means uh, getting hint of the experiment, getting an idea what this experiment is about. So when I'm calling the participants to my study, they already know that they are a part of a study. When they already know, they might get a hint, okay, maybe this setup is this, she's giving this instruction, maybe, you know, she wants uh, uh, to observe this particular thing in us. So they already get a hint that what is the study about? So once the person gets a hint, they might, the participants might, you know, try to fake or pretend or might uh, try to alter their behavior. So when they change their behavior, whatever the result comes in, those are untrue results. So this makes my study low on validity. So I'm not getting the true results. The validity of the study becomes low. Now comes in the strength of field study. The best, the number one strength of field study is that it is high on ecological validity. What is ecological validity? Means eco means nature, natural. So uh, the people are behaving in their natural environment. When a person is behaving in a natural environment, they're likely to show their natural behavior. When they're in an artificial setup, like a lab experiment, they are likely to maybe pretend or fake sometimes. So the ecological validity is high since they are in their natural environment, real world setting. Uh, they don't know they are into a setup or something. They are likely to not to pretend and show their natural behavior. So the validity goes high. Another strength of a uh, field experiment is that the demand characteristics are usually low because the setting is their natural environment. When uh, participants are in their real setting, uh, many a times the experiment is such that people do not know that they are actually in the experiment, that they are part of the experiment. Uh, so they do not get the hint of being in an experiment they don't know whether you know the study is going on so in that case the demand characteristics are very low and this becomes a strength because they tend to act naturally uh, they do not pretend so whatever the dv comes out of iv from the effect of iv that is very natural and the results that come are very true uh, now weaknesses of field experiment. The first weakness of field experiment is that it is very difficult to control the variables. Be it the independent variable sometimes to manipulate the IV or you know uh, to manipulate to vary the IV or the extraneous variables. It is difficult because it is in real setting. Uh, it is not in artificial setup. So as a researcher my control on the experiment on the variables would be lower. Second weakness of field experiment is it is less standardized. So less standardized as in uh, we already did what standardization is that every time the procedure and every time the instructions given are in a standardized manner. Every time it is the same for all the uh, participants in every condition and whenever we repeat. But this is not the case in field experiment because maybe what is happening on one day might not happen on the other day or maybe you know when uh, the participants for example i give an example children coming to the park to play that is a field experiment so maybe you know one day it is raining when another day i you know want to uh, do the experiment again so maybe that day it's sunny so more children are coming in third day maybe you know some other thing is happening it's a holiday and too many kids have come so this these could be the extraneous variables that could be affecting the iv and uh, so this becomes difficult for me to standardize the procedure it is also usually seen that it is low on ethics as compared to the lab experiment because when participants come to the lab, 
uh, usually they know that they are in a part they are a part of the study uh, we take the informed consent we follow all the ethics but when we are in the field experiment very likely these participants whom we are observing in their real world setting they are not aware that they are being studied so they are not able to give us the permission so when informed consent is not there it is usually low on ethics now the strengths of natural experiment are exactly the same as field experiment even the weaknesses are almost same as uh, field experiment so i'll not be repeating for the natural experiment it is quite likely same as what field experiment is there is only one feature that is different that here we cannot control the iv in natural experiment i as a researcher cannot control or vary or manipulate the iv we only choose the iv if you remember i gave an example of an earthquake so in this uh one weakness added is sometimes it becomes difficult for me to do the study because i am not able to choose the iv for example um i gave an example of earthquake maybe i want to do such a thing maybe i want to you know study such people who have just undergo the trauma of earthquake or flood or something like that but i have to choose and maybe i'm not able to find such people or maybe i'm not able to find the location where recently earthquake has happened which has actually changed the lives of people so sometimes it becomes difficult for us to choose the select the participants uh, or maybe we uh, to choose the iv so finally we are done with the types of experiment lesson here i hope you enjoyed and learnt your lesson um now is the quiz time so here are the three questions that i have put up for you these are the practice questions try doing it and please write your answers in the comments below and i will let you know that the answers are correct or not So these are the three questions that I have put up other than this if you want to practice more questions please write your comments below and I'll put up some more questions for you So if you liked my lesson today please do like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the subscribe button uh you'll get the notifications whenever my next lesson will come up and let me tell you uh, my next lesson is on types of experimental design again with the concepts examples and some more practice questions please do watch and subscribe the video see you then